Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Amanda. So welcome back to another What's for Dinner video. Today is all about comfort food. This is part of a comfort food challenge hosted by DIY from House to Home. I'll have her channel linked below as well as the entire playlist. But let's go ahead and get into these recipes. So first up, we have a Greek inspired pizza. And this just is kind of a recreation of a pizza I had a long time ago. And I wanted to kind of make one taste like that. And it was so good, y'all. So we're just going to slice up some onions, red onions, and just kind of thinly slice them and dice up some already cooked chicken breast. You could also, you know, cook some or use rotisserie chicken. Or if you didn't have any chicken on hand, you could even just make this without the chicken. And it would still be really good because this pizza is really amazing. And by the way, all of these meals today are very budget friendly, very easy super quick to make too so this was a really neat thing because all of these were fast and they're good yummy comfort food so we're also going to be slicing up some tomatoes and you can just use whatever kind of tomatoes you have you know roma you could even use cherry or any of those type things like that this is the pizza crust i'm using i'm buy i've been buying it from thrive market and i am completely addicted to this crust like it's so good so easy in fact i just placed an order for more I'll have a link below. This video is not sponsored or anything, but I'll have a link below where I think you can save 25% on your first order or something like that. So check that out in the description box if you want to make an order too. And then I've just got some creamy Alfredo sauce that I'm using. You could also use homemade if you didn't want to use jarred. And, but the jarred really does make this super fast. And I'm just going to layer spinach on here and then all the other ingredients as well. The red onion, the chicken, the tomatoes, some mozzarella. And then I'm also going to sprinkle it with some feta on top. And we like it the order I do it in here because, I don't know, it just seems like, number one, the cheese holds down most of the ingredients. But I love having the tomatoes on the very top. And then putting a little bit of the feta on the tomatoes. It just tastes so good. Now, I'm really excited to be a part of this collab today. I love comfort food. I don't know about y'all, but I do. Speaking of comfort food, what is your favorite comfort food? What is your go-to thing? that when you really want, you know, good comfort food, what is your choice? I have to say, like, it's hard to pick. I mean, I really would probably pick Thanksgiving dinner. I think I mentioned this in another video. I love Thanksgiving dinner. But, you know, that takes a long time to make. So things like pizza, soup and grilled cheese, chicken pot pie, which are all things we're making in this video, and banana pudding are all things that I enjoy. So now here it is out of the oven. We baked it at 420 degrees for about 15 minutes. And you can see those little brown bits on the feta and that turns it so delicious. This pizza is amazing. I highly recommend you try it no matter what kind of pizza crust you use. Next up, we have a super easy chicken pot pie. This really can't get any easier. I've just got some packaged pie crust and I'm just pushing it into the bottom of this pan. And I'm actually going to bake it in the oven. Of course, make sure you prick it and get the holes in it so it doesn't puff up on you. But go ahead and bake it at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to get started cutting up some chicken that we're going to use for our chicken pot pie. I actually just cooked up a large batch of chicken and used it in this recipe as well as the chicken pot pie. And that was really handy because it made quick work of both these recipes. So once we get this all diced up and just in the size you like, and again, this is a, you know, one you could use canned chicken if you'd like. You can use rotisserie chicken. I've got some no salt added mixed vegetables, canned mixed vegetables, and that chicken, about two to three cups, depends on how much chicken you like. One can of cream of chicken soup. I use the healthy request. It's a little bit better for you than the other one, less sodium and things like that. And then a cup of chicken broth. And of course I use unsalted. Now, obviously, add any seasonings to this you like. This is kind of just the way I've always made it. But you could definitely add additional seasonings. Of course, add salt and pepper, whatever you like. So this is the other part of this pie crust. The package, it comes with the, you know, the top and bottom pie crust. And I'm just cutting it up. I did not do a good job keeping that straight at all. <laughs> I kind of made a mess of it. But that's okay. It's just going to go on the top. It's just, I don't know. I've always cut it. I don't do the lattice thing, which is actually really pretty. I should try to take the time to do that, but I don't. Once you've got that mixture all mixed up, you're going to pour that in that pan on top of that cooked crust. And then just put that on there. Your other crust is however you'd like to do it. You could definitely feel free to cut out shapes if you want to kind of make it fun. Or, you know, just, you know, cut it into a square or, you know, whatever. Um, kind of more of a rectangle, I guess. However you'd like to, to do, it'll be good. I used some half and half on the top because I didn't want to do like an egg wash. I just didn't want to fool with getting the egg out that day. 
that did not brown it as much as I would have liked. So egg wash is probably the best or maybe some butter or something like that. But it was fine for us. I did put the broiler on just a little bit to kind of kind of toast up the top and that worked out really well too and we baked this for about 30 to 45 minutes on 375 and it was absolutely delicious i love chicken pot pie it's definitely one of my favorites i need to take the time to also make like a homemade chicken pot pie from scratch too so next up we have homemade vegetable soup with grilled cheese i wanted to create something kind of similar to campbell's vegetarian vegetable soup i used to eat that as a kid and it just always brings back memories of being a kid and the soup i don't know it just it just is a very comforting dish and so i've got more of those no salt canned vegetables because i wanted to kind of replicate that canned taste i didn't want to use frozen in this and then i want i've got some vegetable broth a whole quart of vegetable broth i put in there some tomato paste uh, I lost some of the footage here, so I'm sorry about that. I also put like some garlic powder, onion powder, a bay leaf in there, about four to five tablespoons of tomato paste, you know, pepper, salt, anything like that that you want to add here would be good. And then I didn't have any of the alphabet shapes. I wish I had them because that would have really made it, you know, more similar to it. But I did have that pasta. Any small pasta would be fine. And I added just a little over a half a cup. And I let that cook until the pasta got done. And now I'm going to get to work on my grilled cheese. Of course, everybody's probably made grilled cheese. But there's just something about a grilled cheese to me that just really is very comforting, especially with soup. So th this really just hit the spot for sure. And it's such a quick, easy, and cheap meal too. Very, very budget friendly. And I was out of the typical like yellow cheese. I always use like the Kraft Singles for a grilled cheese. But this was white American craft singles instead, and it still tasted delicious. So it's just not as colorful as like the yellow, you know, the orange cheese is in, in there. That's about the only thing I use the singles for. But when a grilled cheese, I don't know, it just doesn't taste like a grilled cheese without it. Now this soup made probably about enough for three to four servings. Everyone wasn't eating this this night. So uh, I, I knew that would, that would be enough for us. So if you want more than that, you probably want to double or triple it. But here it is. This really did hit the spot. So good. I definitely think it didn't taste exactly obviously like the canned, but it did remind me of it, especially with the grilled cheese. A very comforting meal for sure. And next up, y'all, we got homemade banana pudding. Oh my goodness. I love banana pudding. Please give me a like if you love banana pudding too. And it, it's just one of those things that to me is just, number one, it's very Southern. And number two, it's just delicious. Now in this bowl, I've got my dry ingredients, the flour, sugar, cornstarch, and getting all that mixed together. In a separate bowl, I've got the, just the egg yolks, and we're going to mix that together with the dry ingredients and get that in there. Now, this recipe, I'll have it linked below, but it, will, it actually called for making a meringue, and it also called for roasting the bananas. I did not do either one of those. My daughter does not really like meringue. I do. But since she loves banana pudding too, I didn't want to put that on there since she didn't like it. So we just left it with no topping at all. But you could definitely do the meringue. It's very good in, in my opinion with it. Now, if you need to know how to make a meringue, I actually made a chocolate pie from Loretta Lynn's cookbook that had a meringue. So I will link that video down below so you can go back and watch that if you need to. And now I've just added some milk in here and I'm whisking this all together. And while I'm whisking this all together, I did just want to remind y'all, make sure after that you're done watching this video that you head over and check out the whole playlist because I'm so excited to see all the different recipes. I know we're going to have some yummy, delicious comfort food and I'll have that linked in the description box. So now this actually calls for heating part of the milk and once that's heated, you're going to kind of temper that egg mixture with a little bit of the warm milk to get it to where you don't have any curdling at all. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and add that into your saucepan and you're just gonna cook it over medium heat until it gets thickened. Now, the recipe mentioned 10 minutes. Mine thickened up before that, so I'm sure it could be different for everybody. It may differ on how you know warm your stove eye is and things like that. But once it is thickened, you're gonna just go ahead and add in some vanilla and then we'll get started on layering the whole dessert and bringing it together. And this really does come together really quickly. It's really not much more effort to do homemade pudding than it is to do like the, you know, instant or the cook and serve or things like that. And to me, like, I feel like it just tastes a lot better. And you, again, I've said this before in other videos that you can control what goes in it. You see what goes in it. And you don't have things you can't pronounce in the ingredient label. So that's what I really like about making homemade. But obviously, you know, if 
if that, if that if you don't have time for that then those convenience items are handy to have and they are that's what they're there for so definitely feel free to use those if you don't want to make homemade pudding and so i've just got some of the wafers layered in the bottom i'm just layering the bananas on top i'll slice mine kind of thin i don't like big chunks of bananas in banana pudding and then we're just going to layer that some of the pudding on top and we're just going to repeat that layer now i ended up topping this with the more of the vanilla wafers if you did your meringue this is where like once this gets assembled you would start you know putting your meringue on top and then you would bake your meringue and then you know get that to you know it's the doneness you'd like for it so if you do that there will be that extra step to it but you could also do it this way and serve it with cool whip or serve it with homemade whipped cream or serve it with like you know just the whipped cream in a can you know whatever you'd like to do or just plain we had a, a serving or two with the like whipped cream in a can but honestly we just ate most of it without anything on it. it to me it's really good and it's it doesn't always need that but now i do like the meringue on top it is really good so i do recommend that if you want to to do that step and by the way guys i do videos like this all the time I, my focus is food recipes i want to bring dinner inspiration to you fun dessert ideas things like that all kinds of delicious recipes to help you be able to feed your family and motivate you because i know sometimes it's easy to kind of get in that slump and you're not sure what to cook and so i know videos like this help me a lot so i hope that it helped you as well so if you haven't already i'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and join my youtube family also hit that notification bell so it alerts you of my post so you don't miss out on any delicious recipes and i definitely appreciate it if you would check out diy from house to homes channel as well as the entire playlist i'm so excited to get into that playlist thank you all again for joining me i hope you have a blessed day wherever you are and i'll see you in the next one